to. I, I really want to. I really want the the sound of the drums to. I want there to be room sound in the drums. So there's a few tricks that I use too to maximize that. Or one of the tr one of the things I do for room sounds that I've just done for the last I don't know ten years probably is I always take a, a mic, a, usually a wide, a wide diaphragm condenser mic, and I'll put it at an angle just off the floor, maybe 18 inches off the floor, behind baffles right, you know, six feet back from the kit, and I compress the living crap out of it to where if you were to solo that track, it sounds like, you know, the bottom kit or something. It just, just way overdo it. Distort the input a little bit, crap out the mic pre, this real ugly, hairy thing that lies beneath. But I found you sneak a little bit of that into your good sounding drums or the things that you've recorded well. Man, it just gets big. It just, you know, it just jumps out, starts jumping out of the speakers. Sometimes. Sometimes it's just a mess and you can't use it. There's a thing called the Yam I can't remember the model names, I'm terrible with that, but there's a Yamaha subwoofer microphone. And we used to actually do this with NS10 speakers, is we would you know, they're both transducers, it's just working in reverse. So the cone of the speaker is the diaphragm of your microphone, and we would wire it up to record that. And that's where that, so many people were doing that, that's where that little thing came from. They dressed it up a little bit and made it look cooler. Um, but, you know, when the diaphragm's that big, you're getting, you're really catching the low end. And, and again, in and of itself, it's a pretty, uh, you know, it's not the greatest sound of itself, but it doesn't matter. If you, it sometimes really adds that low thing, it's cool.